हेलो फ्रेंड्स माय नेम इज प्रोफेसर सुधांशु भूषण एंड आई एम द हेड ऑफ द डिपार्टमेंट ऑफ हायर एंड प्रोफेशनल एजुकेशन इन नेशनल इंस्टीट्यूट ऑफ एजुकेशनल प्लानिंग एंड एडमिनिस्ट्रेशन दिल्ली वेल आई हैव कम हियर टू गिव अ टॉक ऑन नेशनल एजुकेशन पॉलिसी एंड द एग्जैक्ट टॉपिक इज स्ट्रक्चरल चेंजेस स्कूल टू हायर एजुकेशन कंपिटेंसीज एंड वैल्यूज नाउ द ऑब्जेक्टिव ऑफ दिस वीडियो लेक्चर इज टू अंडरस्टैंड वट आर द स्ट्रक्चरल चेंजेस इन नेशनल एजुकेशन पॉलिसी राइट फ्रॉम स्कूल एजुकेशन टू हायर एजुकेशन एंड वील ऑल्सो ट्राई टू अंडरस्टैंड हाउ एट द लेवल ऑफ एजेंसी हाउ एट द लेवल ऑफ एन इंडिविजुअल be it teacher or administrator we need to understand the competencies and changes in the behavior that is in terms of values that would lead to the success of national education policy 2020 well my presentation will be in three parts in the first part i would like to provide a framework to understand the change process any change process and as you know the whole purpose of national education policy is to produce that change secondly i would like to discuss very briefly on what are the changes at the level of a structure what are the big changes what are the systematic changes and thirdly i would like to also elaborate for these big changes systematic changes what are the changes in at the level of competencies at the level of values are required so the whole presentation will be in three parts let us discuss with the first part what is the framework through which we can try to understand analyze the national education policy well there is an important framework of a structure and agency this framework says that at times there may be a necessity to change the structure to change the system which is normally uh, in that kind of a change takes place from the top so national education policy also talks about certain change at the level of the structure now at the on the other hand there are various changes which take place at the level of the agencies when a small change at the level of the teachers become a part of the system then also change takes place at the level of agency so both structure as well as agency in this framework have to work together only then the real change in education as a result of education policy may take place so if there is a change in the structure it is necessary to understand what are the roles and responsibilities at the level of an agency mainly particularly in education at the level of teachers in higher education as well as in school education so it is with this framework that i would like to discuss the systemic level changes the structural level changes in school education as well as in higher education so the whole point is that firstly we need to realize that both are essential if certain change take place at the level of a structure and agency does not change then the change the real change in education will not take place well now coming to the second point and which i think is very very important aspect of national education policy that is that lot of changes have been envisaged at the level of system at the level of structure why these changes have been envisaged these changes have been envisaged because at the macro level at the systemic level uh, in terms of the external level lots of changes are taking place as you know change in terms of technology change in terms of pedagogy etc is are taking place and therefore it is necessary that 
some big changes at the level of a structure are also brought about. Now, if you analyze at the level of a school education, one such change is the change in terms of the whole uh, level of education in a school. For example, we have been following as a result of national education policy 10 plus 2 plus 3 type of education. But now what is being envisaged is that there will be 5 plus 3 plus 3 plus 4. Now what, when I say 5 means what? 5 means 5 years of schooling is the first level which is called the foundation level. Which means that the 3 years at the, for the pre-primary level and 2 years of the primary level. So, this is a big change in the conception of how school level of education be categorized. The second level change is called the preparatory, which means that it will be a middle level, which is inclusive of three class, grade three, four and five. And then there is further change from middle to preparatory and which is the level for, for furthermore class 6, 7 and 8 and then there is a secondary level which is class 9, 10, 11 and 12. So whole school education has been divided into four stages. First is the foundational, second is the preparatory, third is the middle and fourth is the secondary level. Now, this, if this kind of a structural change is taking place, then there is a lot which is expected from the teachers. How do we understand the ethos of the different level or stages of school education and how change can be brought about at different levels of schooling? Uh, I will deal with more more on this aspect a little later on. Let me again talk about another big change, the, you can say a structural level change, and that is again in the language. So whole idea of language now is also looked at little differently where it is said that in the formative stages, say up to five years, or up to the, uh, the foundational level, the uh, language will be that of home language or the local language which is with which a child is very much familiar. And then gradually we will move towards bilingualism. That means one language may be a local language or the regional language, another language may be that of any other language, Hindi or English or any other language. So, bilingualism is then uh, has to be practiced at the higher levels of school education gradually. So, this also demands a lot of changes in the uh, way a teacher has to teach in the class. And for all this, another very important aspect that has been talked about at the level of school education is that the whole teacher training and capacity building exercise has to be uh, given an importance. And in this regard, uh, you may be knowing that there is a whole move towards an integrated teacher education program so far as pre-service teacher's training is concerned and during the service also industrial education policy talks about uh, 50 hours of the professional development program for every year which means that the continuous training continuous capacity building will take place and so that the teachers are become competent enough to progressively understand uh, to, to, to progressively uh, improve the quality of school education. 
The fourth change also I'd like to talk about, and that change is that at the school level, there is a concept of cluster. That means uh, uh, with the uh, many schools may form a cluster so that the schools can use the resources commonly and therefore the efficiency in the resource use can be developed. This cluster concept is also becoming one important structural change so far as the school education is concerned. Now let me briefly also discuss in this second part of my lecture on what are the structural changes at the higher education level. And these changes are indeed very enormous, very huge. First and foremost change that is being thought about is that the affiliating system has to be abolished. As you all know that there are many state universities, there are many affiliated colleges, maybe in some state universities there may be 50, in another state university there may be 100 and there are indeed many state universities where there are thousands of colleges affiliated to it. And it has been realized over last so many years of the evolution of higher education in India that affiliating system is very difficult to manage. If a university has say 100 affiliated colleges, then managing those affiliated colleges is very difficult. This is not a good governance, a smart governance, efficient governance. And therefore now it is said that there should be only multidisciplinary research university, multidisciplinary teaching university, multidisciplinary colleges and even a cluster of few colleges may also form a multidisciplinary environment. So there is a shift from whole affiliating system to some sort of a multidisciplinarity system. And multidisciplinarity is the core idea, is the core concept. So how this structural change has to be brought about will be a question which will engage our policy makers for time to come. But another structural change that is being thought about is that how do you make curricular arrangement such that the multidisciplinarity can be uh, practiced. So multidisciplinary can be practiced one at the level of change in the structure by a shift from affiliating university system to multidisciplinary university system or college system or it can also be brought about by having a multidisciplinary curriculum. So how do we really develop multidisciplinary courses, multidisciplinary curricula? How do we um, provide the larger number of choice of courses to the students? The, this is also a very big structural change that at the level of higher education being thought about. Now, of course, the related to this is also the idea of a multiple entry and exit. Now this idea is being debated all over uh, India uh, at all the levels of higher education. Now the what policy says is that you uh, we must have a one year certificate course maybe for one year. After one year students may make an exit to the labor market. They can come back, they can join for for another year of diploma course or there could be two year integrated diploma course, there could be three year uh, um, degree course and four year uh, degree and research, research degree course at the undergraduate level. So this also requires a lot of thinking, lot of discussion at the department level, at the college level, at the university level so that some such sort of multidisciplinarity through the curricular changes be brought about. So uh, and, uh, and of course also at the postgraduate level there is the whole idea of one year postgraduation or the two year postgraduation allowing the possibility of entry and exit. Now this is again a big change 
at the level of system that has been thought about and how do we really practice it has to be through the process of discussion, debates at the level of the universities and the colleges. Now, another very important change at the level of, again, the system or the structure is that now what is being said that for an efficient and for an smart governance, what is most necessary is that how decisions are taken very fast. At present in the university system, the whole decision making process is very, I mean, you can say time consuming. Of course, it is participatory. Of course, it is, it is democratic. There are arguments for and against of this, but the, the new education or the national education policy talks about uh, the change in terms of uh, in terms of a body which is called board of governance and this board of management or board of governance will be a body of very small uh, number maybe seven eight and these this body will be the highest body which will uh, oversee the functioning of the university or the functioning of the college. Associated with this is also the idea of an institutional development plan. That means every institution has to have an institutional development plan which will be the guiding force, which will be the guiding document to make changes over a period of 10 years, over a period of 15 years in the, in the institution and slowly move towards multidisciplinarity, slowly move towards curricular reform, slowly move towards multiple entry and exit and so on and so forth. Therefore, to summarize what I am trying to say is that at the school level, there is a structural change. The structural change consists of the whole uh, the level of education at the, in the school education is changing and that begins from foundational to preparatory to middle to secondary of five years duration, three years duration, three years duration and the four years duration respectively. This is a big change. Secondly, as I was saying that for this whole curricular change has, uh, has also to take place. I will also add here that there is also a commitment of 50% of vocationalization of education, both at the school level as well as at the uh, higher education level. And therefore, at the secondary level, how vocationalization takes place is also um, an important uh, challenge so far as national education policy is concerned. The second change, as I talked about, is that for all this to take place, the whole language policy has also to adjust according to this. And the basic thrust is that during the earlier years, while there should maybe the home language and the local language or the regional language, but gradually we need to move towards bilingualism. Bilingualism. And then there are there are at the teacher preparation level also there are structural changes which are being suggested and much emphasis has been placed for the preparation of the teachers. Now at the higher education level, again, even at the cost of repeating, I must say that the idea is that abolish affiliating university system, introduce multidisciplinary research university or the, or the teaching university or the college and the core of this is that multidisciplinarity has to be introduced and multidisciplinarity in this case means how do we allow more and more choices of courses to the students which not do not necessarily pertain to within a particular uh, discipline but also outside the discipline. And I also discussed the changes at the level of uh, at, at the systemic level in terms of how 
uh, the board of governors driven management has to be introduced in the in the college or the university and how the institutional development plan and the curricular structure such that uh, there is a possibility of certificate program, diploma program, or the degree level program, which can be introduced. Let me, however, add that these structural changes, these system level changes, are not the changes which can be brought about in a year or two or even in five years. This is a process which will continue for next 10 years, 20 years, or maybe even for a greater span, for a greater period of time. But the message is that we need to move from one particular kind of system to another particular kind of system or the structure. Now, what is important? What is important is that these structural level changes can be successful only when the behavioral changes also take place at the level of agency. That is why I said in the first part that if the structural ch changes and the agency does not change, then the structural change cannot be brought about. It will be very difficult to have a structural change. So what is necessary is that at the behavior of an agency also must go along with the structural change. What does this mean in concrete terms? In concrete terms, it means that if we want to have a structural change in favor of multidisciplinarity, then the competencies of a teacher has to develop to understand what multidisciplinarity is and how can we allow more and more choice of the courses in a multidisciplinary or an interdisciplinary framework. And therefore, it also means a change in values. Change in values means what? What values are? Values are our sense, our, our beliefs of so that through which we live in a society. So how do we live in the society? We live in the society with values of trust, with values of mutual cooperation, with values of participation, with values of understanding others and so on and so forth. So if multidisciplinarity has to be a part of the change at the level of a structure, then it is necessary that if I belong to certain particular discipline, then my ways of doing things must change. I must try to find out collaboration or partnership with other disciplines and try to see how in partnership with other disciplines we can promote multidisciplinarity through various ways such as joint teaching, collaborative teaching, joint research, collaborative research and joint publication. So at both the level, teaching, research and publication at all the levels, we will have to come out of our, our previous mindset where disciplinary basis of knowledge uh, used to be important. So the ways of doing things has to change. And for this, what is necessary? The first step is that at the level of agency, we try to understand what these changes are, what is the meaning of these changes. And only then at the level of our working, at the level of through the change in the behavior is possible and the structural changes may gradually take place. So, for example, it is a big policy move that there should be a five years and three years and three years and then four years of schooling. Now, we need to understand that five years means what? Five years means three years of pre-primary, two years of primary. And at this level, whatever is the competency required, that competency need to be uh, provided. So this ethos of the change has to be understood. That is why even competency becomes very, very important. And on the aspect of competency, there is an emphasis. Every teacher will have to now undergo 
uh, in addition to their pre-service training and in-service training. 50 hours of in-service training, which basically amounts to four credit course uh, in a year. So through, through, the, uh, through the professional training, the competency of a teacher has to be improved. We need to understand, for example, if bilingualism at some stage is, is promoted, we need to understand how can we have bilingualism in the school education. And the changes will be necessary in terms of the textbooks or in terms of the competency of a teacher to teach in two languages and so on. So the whole idea, the whole, the, the whole ob objective of this uh, particular uh, lecture is to understand, is to sensitize, is to orient our teaching community, which is indeed the, one of the largest community in India, is that if the national government has been promoting few changes at the level of a structure, at the level of system, which has become inevitable perhaps because large changes are required at the present moment, then it is necessary that our ways of doing things should also change accordingly. And ways of doing things depends upon two important components, depends upon what is our value, what is our competency. And as I said, by value, we mean that how do we mutually try to understand each other, try to understand the concept, how do we cooperate, how, how do we form a group, how, how do we lead a group. So all these values are the democratic values, are the, are the values of inclusion, which is necessary for making a change at the level of a structure. Needless to say that competencies are the most important component. And in this today's knowledge economy, today's context where knowledge is changing very fast, we have to upgrade, whole teaching community have to upgrade in terms of the competence. You may not be a master of all the knowledge, but it is necessary that we try to understand uh, much more deeply uh, anything that we have to implement. So I think it is one of the very important implementation and strategy that we make changes in the behavior when going along with the changes in the structure. I think this is the message that I would like to convey through this lecture. So thank you very much. Hope national education policy is implemented at the uh, ground level with this spirit of change in the behavior, change in the competency and the values. So thank you very much.